Over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see Mastering Probability. You go to newsletters. You see Mastering Probability right on the right-hand side, top row. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you can get it for one year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Steve not only has a great newsletter, when you get his newsletter, folks, okay, you're going to get a huge amount of information over there. You got a lot of good archives over there. If you want to understand how to ride that market, check it out. 30-day money-back guarantee, great deal. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, big-time celebration here in Florida, Tom. As you know, all three of our NFL teams are in the playoffs. That's pretty wild, isn't it? I know. I, <laughs> I saw that stat last night after uh, was I, I don't know the if that's Lions ever happened won. Before. Yeah, right, right. I, I don't know if that's ever happened before. But that was the Lions. Uh, they really, you know, I'm originally from Detroit. And, that's right, uh, so that's right. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, Gordy it's Hall, a, man, it's, that's right. It's, it's, it's been a tough road, uh, but uh, you know they really did look. They really did look good this year. They did. And they did. I, I, I yeah. enjoy watching uh, uh, last night's uh, game. Yeah. Uh, out there as well. So we'll see. You know, um, what, what's going to be cool is next Monday. You guys have the Monday night game. I know. So Tampa and the Cowboys. So you know that's going to be a tough game. Uh, uh, going against Buffalo, that's going to be a tough game for Miami. And Jacksonville going against uh, the Chargers. That's that's not going to be an easy game either. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But it is great to get all four, all three uh, Florida teams into the uh, playoffs out there. Everyone's coming to Florida. We got all the winning teams. That's so it. I don't know if it's. I don't. Know, so I was with somebody last night who was thinking of moving down. He's from the Northeast. He said there's something like twelve thousand people a day moving it's, to the state. It's is that brilliant. It? Yeah. No. It's a, it's a monster number. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Right, we started we we started figuring that out. I said that that, that didn't seem right, but uh, but hey, come on down, right? We uh, come on down. Totally, hey. yeah. <laughs> so hey, I thought we would do here beginning of the year. Okay. So we've got some different uh, cycle type patterns that we can take a look at, and one of the tools that I use, um, it's uh, provided by the folks over at Seasonix. They've done a really tremendous job of being able to put together the all of the historical data so that you can take a look at it over time to see what kind of seasonal patterns might be in play and it gives you a lot of flexibility so i used to do all this work on spreadsheets by hand and it took pretty much forever you know trying to line up you know the the month of january in 1923 to, to 19 to, to 2022 as an example sure. you know not so easy to do so these guys have got it done uh the, this chart here that we're looking at we are now in the third year of a presidential cycle, and it has a cyclical pattern. If we take a look at the red lines, folks, as we take a look at some of these charts, those represent where we're at today, just so you can see. So if the if this is the undercurrent here, uh, the third year of a presidential term, we should be expecting a sideways move for a little bit out here. And we can see it, it sort of tops, nothing significant to the uh, downside, a little bit like the consolidation that we have been in. What this does, though, tell us is that the low for the year could possibly be in. So if the market follows this cycle, that's what its message to you and I is. If we take a look at the Dow and just go back over the last 126 years, so this takes us back to 1897. Again, the red line on the left-hand side shows us exactly where we're at. So this is just the normal, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a presidential cycle, just simply all the data since uh, for the last 126 years. And what is the average price movement? Well, turns out that uh, today uh, at an average basis would be a uh, top. Price would move down into the uh, middle of January, maybe the end of next week or so, then move higher. Then one more move down to about the end of uh, February, and then it takes off. And again, in this case here, this is indicating that, we, that the low for the the year uh, could be in for the uh, Dow. There's another cyclical pattern, Tom, that you and I can take a look at. And this shows us, so we're entering 2023. And what we can do with all this data is we go back and just take a look at years that end in threes to see what kind of cyclical pattern it has. 
here. This suggests that we should see a, now just take a look at the Dow in these charts here. This And, and the reason I've done that, folks, is because I have more data to be able to utilize. So for years ending in three, much more data than if I looked at the S&P 500. Uh, third year of presidential cycle, much more data in the Dow than I have inside the S&P 500. But here inside the Dow would suggest that actually we would see the market top out about now and then move lower into February and then take off. That would be the end of the uh, the, the bottom of the uh, 2023. In this case here is suggesting towards the end of uh, February. So that's for years that are ending in three. Now, you and I know, we listen to the uh, uh, talk shows or driving around listening to the channels and so forth. And economists continue to, to debate whether the U.S. is in a recession or not. So if there's a debate, we're not sure, you know, how do I figure out what the market might be doing? Well, there's an issue, there's a fact out there that is not disputable. And that fact is that uh, inflation is outpacing GDP, otherwise known as stagflation. Now, there's employment uh, data that goes along with that. But if we take a look at uh, stagflationary periods, uh, and here I've got this uh, charted out. This data here is from the World Bank, I believe is where I got that from. Maybe it was uh, from a Fred, a St. Louis Fred uh, site out there. And here, what we can see is that this is inflation outpacing GDP, and it lasts from 1973 to 1983. Okay, so we've got some data here, although it's for a short period of time, 10 years, but it, and, and that's over the uh, the entire period of the uh, of the uh, Dow out here. If we take a look at that 10-year period of time, here's what its cyclical pattern looks like. And what this tells us, Tom, is that price really continues to move higher. We fluctuate up and down, but it continues to move higher into about the middle of May. And then the market just simply moves lower. So we are in, or we appear to be in, a stagflationary period of time out there. So that's a really good uh, chart to take a look at. So missing from the Dow's historical price movement that we just took a look at out there is the doom and gloom. You know, that's discussed on television. So why? Because we just took a look at a third year of a presidential cycle. That looks like markets or the Dow moves higher. The regular seasonal cycle pattern, years ending in three, and then even an average price movement during uh, stagflation. So if we go take a look at the charts, so that's what the cycles are. The way that I take a look at those cycles, Tom, if it's a cycle high or a cycle low, I'm looking for some type of confirmation on pattern recognition tools. Yes. Well, here, these are the weekly charts. This is the weekly chart for the Dow on the left, the Dow equity future contract on the right. And what they did was they both formed what I refer to as roads momentum indicator bottom patterns. This is on a weekly chart that we're taking a look at. Here's the weekly chart for the Dow going back to 2009. And those blue arrows are identifying roads momentum indicator bottoms and we can see that each time these formed here on a weekly basis they've identified significant bottoms so we just took a look at in that cyclical pattern has to at least has me saying hmm maybe we have put in a significant bottom we can go back before march of 2009 and the next roads momentum indicator bottom pattern that forms was in 2002 well that identified a pretty significant bottom in the market so folks would like to learn this Tom, as you mentioned earlier, they simply can subscribe to Mastering Probability. They can go right to the ultimate reversal patterns out there. And it's a one-hour workshop. Nice. And they will learn exactly how the Roads Momentum Indicator pattern and tool does. Lastly, this is just a quick chart, a weekly scan that uh, uh, subscribers uh, get access to. It shows all the weekly Roads Momentum Indicator bottom patterns that are out here for these instruments. Just a small little snippet. Of, uh, of what mastering probability can provide for customers. Steve, let, let me ask you. So the, we're only in the second week of, uh, you know, 2023. January. So yes. if the Dow takes out the lows, are you saying of, of 2023? That, saying that, or are we talking the October lows? We're talking about the January lows. January lows, okay. Yeah. Get over yeah. to TFNN, folks. Growling and Take prowling. Care, Thanks, man.